Hi. <laughs> chicken so I pray to God that I remember if not that chicken is gonna burn hi welcome to my youtube channel my name is Gloria if this is your first time you're welcome if this is your second third fourth fifth time how <laughs> far so today we're going to be talking about Vicky James and her wedding um so first things first I'm not very like social media savvy like that even though I'm a social media content creator I'm not on social media like most of the time. If I'm on social media, I am on YouTube, not really Instagram like that. Whenever like I am maybe breastfeeding in the middle of the night by like 2 a.m., I'll just go to Instagram and just do like an endless scroll for like an hour or so. And every time it's just Vicky James, Vicky James. Either it's her wedding popping up or it's a blog talking about her wedding or it's a blog talking about her husband or it's a blog talking about this or it's somebody's comment under a video and i was just like is it past this wedding this girl be the carry go before like what at <laughs> everybody's blood is hot i think one of the like sentiments that nigerians held a lot was the fact that she was very vocal about her love way more than her husband who is her yeah for me who is her husband now and <laughs> I understand that point of view like I also like hold such sentiments especially because men are sure we women shake a lot and so when we Nigerian women in particular women see a woman who is very like vocal about her love for a man whether it be a husband or it be like a boyfriend or whatever and we do not see that man doing same even if that man is an introvert or whatever if he doesn't do the same thing red flag on top man matter they're not they serious for man matter relax so i kind of understand that sentiment and i also verily and understandably understand vicky james it pleases her to love her husband and to be very very loud about it and it's normal because at the same time we are very happy like nigerian women nigerian men we are well i wouldn't say nigerian men <laughs> but we nigerian women love when we see a man that loves his wife and is very vocal about his love for his wife that is very you know he will scream on top of the mountain about how much he loves his with his wife we love that right because we women we don't to suffer <laughs> We don't to suffer for my matter. So we really love to see men doing above and beyond for women. But when a woman does it, I don't think it's out of jealousy that we, you know, scorn or we raise our brows. I feel like it's more like, relax, babe. <laughs> men matter, they're not too serious put. That kind of sentiment. I feel like that's where most Nigerian women are coming from. And if, you are not coming from that angle you are just angry then i don't know <laughs> i don't know men are not perfect neither are women women are not we know we are not perfect we talk to them much we have it we have chuku chuku in our tongue way too they talk if you have love to show your husband and you feel unapologetic about it why not show it to your husband like who cares like show your husband the love because they deserve it as well like they also need to be are human beings like they also want to be loved out loud they want to be loved in the open and i feel like if she wants to love her husband or whatever however she feels or however she she deems it because at the end of the day she's the only one that has experienced what she has experienced it's like us telling somebody who gave birth and is making so much noise about it like it's like oh my god i just gave birth like oh guys everything and it's shutting everywhere down shutting lagos down because they've given birth and it's like you can be there thinking bro people give birth every day like even mad women are giving birth relax but you don't even know what that person went through to give birth you don't know how many miscarriages that person had you don't know if that person had to go through ivf you don't like we don't know what people go through before they achieve like success or they achieve a goal and so when they celebrate it 
we're not in the place to say you are over celebrating it because you don't know what what they went through to achieve that and if they deem like a big celebration is what's going to you know best suit that kind of you know achievement then who are you to say or oh, gotta relax like at the end of the day it's their celebration it's their joy it's their emotion so we should not stomp on that and say that they are overdoing what God has, you know, blessed them with. Because at the end of the day, wedding, marriage, it's all a blessing. Whether it turns out good or not, that one time will tell. But just achieving, you know, or getting somebody to do life with is an achievement. And so we can just hope that it will be a good marriage, right? So yeah. One second, let me go and check my chicken. I don't want me to born. All right, another sentiment people held was the fact that she was posting a lot. She was posting every tiny, teeny, weeny bit of information about the wedding. Weddings have like so many different breakdowns, like introduction, then traditional, then there's pre-traditional, then there's this one, then there's that one. Like, as somebody who did a parlor wedding, if you don't know what a parlor wedding is, I did my wedding in my father's sitting room. Everybody in total in our sitting room was just like maybe 15 or 10, like we were very little. And that was the wedding I wanted because I'm a very introverted person. Growing up, I have never wanted a big wedding. I hear when I watch movies and girls or little girls would be like, oh, as a little girl, I always wondered what my wedding dress would be like. And I'm just like, I have never wondered in my entire life wearing a gown. One, because I grew up as a tomboy, so I I never envisioned myself as a white wedding gown girl. Like I just, I, I, I guys, I didn't have a white wedding. Like I didn't do a white wedding. Do I did not do a church wedding. It was just that palo wedding. Me and my husband wore Ankara, and that was it. Like that's my wedding, and then I, I did the, you know, I signed in court. I did not do like a white wedding. I didn't wear a wedding gown didn't do any of that so imagine somebody like me seeing all that post back to back to back to back to back to back to back of Vicky James wedding honestly I did not care I did not care and I do not understand people that care so much why so look at it this way right when somebody like me now let me just use myself as, a, as an example i'm pregnant and then i'm posting you know vlogs and posting updates about my pregnancy which usually normal people would just stay in their house and be pregnant like they wouldn't post anything they will not talk, talk to them tell the world about their pregnancy like they're just going to be pregnant in their house and live their life but me now because i'm a content creator i feel like this is a chance for me to one enhance my content creation to make more money and three document my pregnancy because i feel like it's a once in a lifetime opportunity i am never going to be pregnant again with that particular baby share to other people who have probably never been pregnant before or people who are pregnant who also want to see because me when i'm pregnant i like to watch pregnant videos like other people who are also pregnant with me with similar due dates that's what i like to watch and so that there is me being a content creator i'm using something that naturally wouldn't be posted i'm posting it because i'm a content creator and there are so many benefits of me posting this we have normalized the idea of posting personal information on social media for either personal gain or just to document it because it will never happen again i feel like weddings are like once in a lifetime events right even though we say people just they divorce any hour like say nah gary but it's a once in a lifetime event and if somebody wanted to document every tiny bit of their wedding especially if it's large like a big wedding i don't see a reason why they shouldn't because we do not care when content creators like post like you know oh my mom got this for me boyfriend got this or follow me to go and cut my hair or follow me to go and shave my nails all right so as i was saying before my camera died um i feel like as a content creator posting things that usually people are not going to see if not for this day and age where we post every personal life detail is not common but now it's common so I feel like people did not hold that like 
um, to heart when watching her stuff. It was almost as if it was weird. Like, why are you so like social media conscious? Why are you off? Why are you living for social media? Like, we are all guilty of this, so handsy. All of us are guilty. Follow me to go and eat. Follow me to my boyfriend. Follow me to go and cut my hair. Follow me to go and shave my face. Follow me to go and see. Like, it's follow, 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 follow. Don't you just go on your own? Must I follow? You can have your opinions. I'm not saying don't hold your opinion. Hey, we ready for next bikini. One second. She is a content creator. She's a fashion designer. She sews clothes. I really don't know the term. But yeah, she makes clothes and she's good at it. And she wants to, you know, show you everything she wore from the details, everything. Because at the end of the day, she's marketing her business. At the end of the day, she's putting herself out there. Like she is putting her clothes out there. She's promoting her brand. Like there are so many reasons why she wanted to post that video. And if we are being honest, most of the time you see content creators like opening up about their life is for engagement. You know, uh, apart from the fact that we want to share our, you know, experiences in a creative way, we also want to grow our engagements, grow our followership, grow our. Because at the end of the day, this 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 same. I didn't know so. At the end of the day, this thing is a work. <laughs> it's a job. <laughs> So you have to be very like precise and uh, you have to have an idea of what you're doing. If you're just doing it based on flame job like me, me I know have direction. <laughs> I know have direction, no follow my Lego. If it's your work and you want to be committed to your work, which you, which, which you should be. <laughs> the person that is holding my tongue, <laughs> free me, free me which it should be uh, I don't see anything wrong with her posting every tiny details from the dress she wore from the introduction from her husband's dress from the photo shoot like at the end of the day this thing I post to so Instagram is grateful because the more you post the better for you and she has grown a lot on her Instagram and um, followership so at the end of the thing at the end of the day it worked so we should not be biased about her wedding because we content creators now so we did do we post everything sometimes too much information and just that's just how it is that's how we make our money me i'm personally not a believer that if you have a different opinion from me you are a hater that's not live babes sis people just have different opinions because you can have a different opinion from somebody and not hate the person just because somebody does not think Vicky James should post every tiny detail of her wedding does not mean they hate her the last um, sentiment I feel like a lot of people held was when she <laughs> when she was singing with the choristers and people were like um, why was she telling the choristers to kneel down why was she hello <laughs> She pay for those people, all of them their head. She pay for all of them head. Yes, she have paid for their head individual. What they wore, what they sang, I'm sure she had to approve it. Yes, she had to approve it so she can actually tell them, kneel down. Because this is the thing, even your pastor in church, tell you raise up your hand and worship God. Hello sir. Maybe you go tell me how to worship God. This thing is a personal relationship. But he feels like at this moment, let us raise our hands and worship God. This is how best we should worship God. Raising our hands, lifting our hearts to God. Raise up your hands and worship God. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor it is well. Do I feel like touching my neighbor? No. But under his authority at that moment, as the pastor who is pastoring over us at the church, Touching my neighbor is what he says I should do. And so Vicky James at the end of the day, at that particular time, has authority over those people because she's paying for their head. She has paid for their service at that particular time. So if she's telling them to kneel down, Egbon, on your knees, 
get on your nails you might not think it was right if you're not that kind of person if you are not vicky james you might not think it was right i personally wouldn't even do that but i don't think we should fault her for doing that because your you know your your character is different so one second my shaking, my shaking already so yes that's all i have to say i don't tired so i don't de stress myself thank you guys so much for watching this video let me know what you think about this whole wedding banter in the comment section and um, 